Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about scaling. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what exactly is backend scaling and how can a self-taught backend developer learn scaling? Well, uh, it really much comes down, it, it really depends on what you mean by scaling and this is where it gets tricky for you because you probably don't understand what mm, what we talk about when we talk about scaling. So at a very high fluffy level, scaling just means that you are going to be more people who have higher, requi higher requirements on something related to your application. The reason why I go that fluffy is because some people, when they say scaling, they talk about scaling the amount of availability. In other words, to how often your, your system goes down. Some people talk about scaling in the sense of performance, that it has to maintain a certain level of performance. And some people talk about more people are needed in order to maintain this system that is growing in size. And so the popular common way of thinking about scaling is just as this sort of loose abstract thing we mean when we say that this system that used to be very small is now going to get bigger and we need to be able to allow that system to grow both in complexity in terms of code like how much code is there and how much is that code doing but also in the people aspect how many people can effectively work on this project because you could have a very performant application and it's quote unquote it's going to scale. You could have like a million boxes of that thing and it's going to be super high availability, but it can be written in such a way that only one person can work on it at any given time. And that's not going to work because then the amount of requested work on the system will if you have a backlog that's 10 years long and it's probably not good because you're not going to be able to ship anything and so that becomes a bottleneck so you can just think of scaling as this thing we talk about when we try to say hey this system is going to get big how do we make sure that there are no issues with delivery speed and performance and quality and all of that stuff now in order for you to learn how to scale as a self-taught developer uh, I will tell you that the best thing for you is to work on large scale projects. That is in essence what I'm talking what I will give you as a tip. This is something where I get this is just based on my experience guys. Uh I get a lot of these sort of uh, like questions or it's not just questions, it's also something that is a little bit sad sometimes to see. I interview quite a lot of software developers as part of my job and whenever I talk to freelancers and I'm talking about like what we in my region define as freelancers which are usually people who are working as solo software developers they're usually only working on like smaller scale projects where they might have one or two or like depending on like what their requirements are it's a very usually small systems usually small corporate websites or smaller internal systems that do something arbitrarily it's uh, what we what I what we refer to as small scale development. Now the problem with small scale development is that it, you will never have to think about scaling at all, usually, because it's extraordinarily rare that scaling is a factor when you have small time systems, and it's only really when you get to work in really large projects where you might have multiple systems that talk to each other, multiple teams, uh, you do have multiple products, you have to synchronize maybe you know over 100, 200, 300, it doesn't matter, like you're talking about people in the hundreds and you have like de like different delivery pipelines and etc etc when the system is so big literally that it actually is usually a distributed system talking with I'm not saying microservices now but that, that is one example of when it gets really really big and you have a need for multiple teams when the system is so big that you can't just have one team maintain all that at the same uh, for to that's not sustainable you have to have maybe like I'm not saying say 10 tw uh, like uh, at least a handful of teams up towards like you know in some cases I've been on systems where they literally have maybe 100 or 200 different teams working on different parts of this gigantic system, right? When you are at that size of a system, 
that is the only time that you are going to use certain tools without, you know, unless you shoehorn in the thing. I had a presentation the other day when I was talking to a few guys who, there is, I'm not saying it's their first time working in a large scale system like this, but it's the first time they've ever really worked with a system that requires certain tooling that they've never really used. An example would be Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is an example of a tool where the only real time you have a need for that tool is if you work at scale. You can absolutely go microservices like at a small scale. You can find ways to get a use case for Kubernetes, but the reason it was designed in the first place was as part of like the Borg project, like Google's need to scale, to literally create like thousands of different services that needs to be maintained in a sustainable way because you can't do that by traditional means, like this old like manual process that we used to have where at small scale you might solve the same problem with this shell script or something like that, but that's not going to work when you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of services and all of this sort of role, uh, like all these different complexities to deploying code. It's the same thing goes for CI and CD pipelines, for example. If you only ever work by yourself, that's not re. You can, of course, have a CD, CI and CD pipeline, or you can have like pull requests and like all these sorts of workflows that tie into your delivery process. But it doesn't really make sense until you have enough people that it is sort of necessary because you're actually going to see some problems come if you don't have alignment and like all of this sort of stuff in place. And so for a self-taught developer to learn this, it's actually very simple. You just have to work in an environment where these sorts of tools are a necessary evil. The reason why I call them a necessary evil is a loving term because in an ideal world, I mean, no, this is sort of where you start to show your seniority. When you are a philosopher junior type of person, you are more excited about getting to use all of these tools because they're so cool, because it feels like you're a serious developer when you use them. But the really experienced software developers, I mean, even though I mean, we, uh, they, they also get excited by, tool, by these sorts of tools, but they also all understand that the perfect world would be if you could run all of this stuff in a simpler fashion. You want to simplify things. An example would be, I mean, take Google or Facebook or like any of these types of super companies like their like sort of thing, right? Imagine if they had the, the capacity to run all that, all those super systems and like maintain their revenue, maintain everything and so forth, but they could just have one guy or girl do that on their personal laptop. Imagine like a futuristic society, like technology situation where like, I don't know, we have quantum computers plus plus and they could literally run their entire infrastructure on one laptop. From a cost perspective, that is better. From a complexity perspective, that's better. From a deployment perspective, that might also be better, assuming now a lot of stuff about like networks and et cetera, et cetera. But I hope that you see what, what I'm going for. A lot of that, the, 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 the scaling, pro sc scaling is a problem. It's not something you should be. You should think is like a, the goal is not to scale, or rather, the goal is not to make things complex. The goal is to keep things simple and stable while you're forced to scale. It's a it's a it's a mixed blessing. Scaling means that usually that you're making more money, or you have a need to make the system more elaborate because your business is growing or things are getting more complicated. But it's always a battle where. Now, you need to scale, but you need to do so while trying to maintain as much as humanly possible of that simplicity you have when you're like one person working on one monolithic application. That is the mindset that you should have with you. So what I want you to take away from this is that backend scaling, any type of scaling comes down to the same thing. You are getting an increasingly growing system and you're, you need to figure out a way to maintain uptime so it doesn't crash or maintain performance so it doesn't like, like the system doesn't slow down because you have more and more people using the system. You also make sure, need to make sure that the quality is there so you don't have more bugs just because the system once again is growing or that you can maintain development speed so that more people can join the project and deliver because of course more code means more features means means more maintenance and like all this extra work that comes with it and you need more people usually to maintain these larger systems that is what we talk about when we talk about scaling in like the traditional term so think of it as this fluffy term just means we have more stuff and how do we make sure that everything keeps on working even though the system is like it's like a balloon can the balloon expand without popping 
that's yeah, that's sort of the mental picture you can go with. And then for a self-taught developer to learn this, it's actually very simple. You just have to work on these larger projects where it's sort of getting to the point where you need these extra tools. If you only work at very small scale and you work with very simple system, it's very rare that you get to use more advanced solutions and you work with multiple teams and so forth and so forth. And I'll just give you this one. Uh, after you do that for long enough, you're going to start to realize why scaling is a necessary evil. And sometimes you're actually going to miss working on these smaller, simpler projects, uh, even though that's usually not the way the larger projects work. So it's sort of you, you learn how to work with these scaling s s problems and you figure out how to do it but at the same it's sort of like uh, how some people you know they live in a large city and they live in modern times and then they start to realize that hey you know what it used to be so simple and maybe and then they get inspired to go out and uh, go camping or something like that because they start to realize that there are these th these subtle little things that are so nice with just having a simpler uh, simpler life or a simpler way of doing things than having to deal with all of this extra complexity that comes with modern day development and so forth and so forth. Have a great day!